First question, uh, Eric Wilson, 1070. DJ, uh, you know, you guys now have solidified your spot in the playoffs. You're going up against Milwaukee. Can you just speak to what your mindset is moving forward? Uh, moving forward, we still have uh, two games left, so we want to just keep trying to get better and uh, use these games to get in a rhythm and uh, work on our good habits. Um, and then at the end of the day, we, you know, we pretty soon here, we're going to start focusing on Milwaukee and getting ready for the playoffs. So, um, you know, like I said, we still have two games, so it's tough to just shift our attention to Milwaukee right now, but uh, pretty soon here, that's what we're going to be doing. Josh Robbins, The Athletic. DJ, um, Steve just mentioned, Cliff just mentioned something along the lines of some team building stuff the team has done in, in recent weeks, et cetera. What, what have been some of the best team building exercises and um, activities the team has done there? I mean, just being together, man, you know, guys have been, uh, you know, eating together a lot, um, playing games, you know, going golfing, fishing, you know, all type of activities. Um, you know, it's, it's good. I mean, you know, because we're here inside it, in this bubble and, you know, other than playing and practicing, you know, you kind of want to get away from basketball sometimes. So, and that's hard to do when inside of this bubble. So um, just having those activities and those moments to just get away are, are good for us mentally. Philip Rossman, Reich, Orlando Magic Daily. Hey, DJ, I know obviously you're, fo you're focused on, on the two games immediately, but it, it's rare to be able to have a week knowing your, who your playoff opponent is. Do, do you believe that that could be some kind of advantage? Obviously, they, they know who they're facing too, but can that be an advantage for start to prepare for the um, I wouldn't necessarily say an uh, advantage because, like I said, we still have to, um, you know, we still want to play well these next two games. We still want to do the right thing and, and, uh, and get better. So, um, uh, it's, it's hard to say an advantage, but just knowing who we play, we can kind of start focusing on different strategies we can do in the two games we have left and, and use that against Milwaukee. Brian Welch, WKMG. Yeah, DJ, where is the team's level of confidence right now heading into these last two games? I mean, it's, it's got to be difficult to just flip a switch when you get into the playoffs. Oh, uh, what do you mean? Well, I mean, you know, you've lost four in a row here. Are you concerned at all about the team's confidence? Because it's probably, it's not something where it's easy to just flip a switch when the playoffs begin, or, or is it? I mean, you, you see that we have guys missing, right? Absolutely. So we expect to have all our guys back once the playoffs start. So that gives me confidence right there. So we've been playing shorthanded, which is not an excuse. Um, but come playoffs, we should have all our guys. So that gives me confidence right there by itself. So. I mean, I don't know what you want me to say to that, that question. We'll go to uh, David Steele, Fox Sports Florida. Hey, DJ, um, Milwaukee, uh, number one defensive team in the NBA. What makes them so good defensively, and what can you guys work on perhaps in the, in the next couple of games that would help you uh, against them defensively? Uh, they're a great help team. They, they communicate well. They're, they're big. They're long. They have a lot of guys that uh, can play really good defense. So for us, it's just, you know, moving the ball and just, you know, playing together. That's, the, that's what I said. Like, we can work on those things during, during these next two games. And uh, we, we kind of know what they, what they bring to the table defensively. We played against them about four times this past season. So um, we know what to expect, and we just got to be ready to, to, to do those little things. Josh Cohen. Hey, DJ, can you touch on Melvin Frazier Jr.? Yesterday he got more playing time and played well. Uh, talk about his progress throughout the course of the season. Yeah, man, I mean, um, you know, it's been great to see him develop. Um, with so many guys out right now, it's, 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 the NBA is, is all about opportunity and next man up. And Melvin came in yesterday and, and did a great job of getting ready to play and, and making some big plays for us. And um, it's always it's always good to see that happen to guys. You know, sometimes you wait your turn, wait your turn, and it feels like it's never going to happen. But you got to be ready when your number is called, and he definitely showed that last night. Josh Robbins. Speaking of Melvin, last night it seemed like when it, you know, he hit that three, uh, he had another, uh, at least another nice basket, uh, and it just seemed like your bench was louder for some of his makes than anybody else's. What? What made everybody so happy for him? Was it just the fact that he's getting his he was getting his chance and, and converting on it? Yeah, I mean, you know, we we see all the work that guys put in behind the scenes. A lot of a lot of the media and fans don't get to see how hard guys work um, 
after practice, before practice, on um, off days, all that kind of stuff. So to see a guy who works so hard and finally get his opportunity and, and capitalize, it's, it's, it's exciting to see. I mean, I, I love seeing that kind of stuff. I think we all feel the same way. And uh, that's why I think we all was excited for Melvin because he's, He's been in and out the, the G League. He's he's worked hard every day, and he got his opportunity last night against a good team, and, and he made some big plays. Dan Savage? EJ, obviously being shorthanded is never ideal, but can the silver lining in that be that, you know, the Gary Clarks, the Wessel Wundu, Melvin Frazier, et cetera, get some experience and some playing time here in case they're called upon in the postseason? I mean, yeah, for sure. That's how, that's how I'm looking at it, you know. Um, you know, we, we've been shorthanded for a lot of these games. Um, like I said, that's not an excuse, but it, it gives other guys opportunities to get their feet wet and, and, and see what the games are like. And, and we're going to need all those guys come playoffs, you know. Um, so it was it's, it's kind of a blessing in disguise. And uh, once everybody's full, fully ready and, and healthy, I think everybody's going to get their opportunity and be ready. Roy Perry, Orlando Sentinel. Hey DJ, obviously with uh, you know with the roster depleted a little bit like it is, you guys have got to find some production from other players. How much of that sort of falls on the veterans to make sure that people aren't trying to do too much? Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, I mean that's what you you know you got to have vets on your team and, and leaders and guys who've been in the league for a while, you know, to kind of you know communicate with guys in timeouts before the game, after the game, to just you know just play your game and and. You know, even last night, you know, we, we should have won that game. But at the, at the end of the day, we, we played shorthanded against a full strength Celtic team who I, who I consider one of the best teams in the league. And I think everybody who stepped up and played last night did a great job. So um, it's just it's just a great a great thing to see. Hey, just time for a few more. Uh, Eric Wilson. Hey, DJ, along those lines, um, you know, what have you been saying to Markel as far as getting him prepared for this postseason, have you kind of taken him under your wing, being a vet on this team? Yeah, for sure. That's my guy, you know, um, and uh, he's doing a great job every day of putting in extra work, um, getting in shape. You know, it's, it's been hard for a lot of us, to, you know, to, to be off so long and come back and play high level basketball. So uh, he's been doing a great job taking care of his body, getting ready. And uh, I feel like everybody will be full strength come playoffs. And and mentally, everybody will be where they need to be and, um, you know, have, hopefully have a, have a great run in the playoffs. Mute again, George. You good? DJ, you're good. 